Hi guys, welcome back to his channel. Today we are with Rod from Race Service and we're going to talk to him about this amazing Porsche 935 that is yes. sitting behind us. So do you want to tell us a bit about the car? Well, uh, I've been obsessed with Porsche 935 since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm actually old enough that I saw them race when I was... Are you talking about the, what, was it like, what, what I know is the Moby Dick car? Uh, well, Moby Dick was one of several different yeah. iterations. Obviously, this guy is not a Moby Dick. Yeah. It doesn't have the long tail. But yeah. I, I've been a big fan of them since I was very small. And uh, I collect like model cars for them and all this stuff. So um, I was uh, living in Sweden and I went to this event called Gatbil. Mm -hmm and uh, I saw this car come in on a trailer and at the time we had a drift team and we we're very busy doing things but I kept walking over to look at the car okay. then the next day it had the for sale sign on it and I freaked out okay. <laughs> and it took me about six months to figure out how to buy it yeah. and it turned out that the I'm calling it the 935X now okay. so it turned out the 935X was built in Sweden um, mm -hmm. in the early 90s by a famous Porsche rallycross race car builder and it was his personal car. Okay. And then it was put into storage into a barn for 20 years. And the guy that found it uh, sold it to me. So I immediately, I was living in, uh, I just moved to the UK. So, so what year was that? I got it in 2014. 2014, okay. And then I moved to the UK um, and the car was in storage actually in, in uh, Kent. Yeah, in, in Kent. Sheerness <laughs> by the sea. Not far from where we live. Yeah, <laughs> so it was, it was in storage there, but we didn't do, I brought it at once to, um, to drive it, I got to drive it around the Top Gear test track, funny okay. enough. Um, but it didn't run very well. It was a very old build, like one of the turbos was blowing oil. Yeah. It did run terrible and it was very old, outdated. So um, then I moved to LA a year ago, brought the car with me. And um, earlier this year for the Luftgekult show, we decided that we we're gonna switch the build on. Okay. And um, at, so we did the project in two stages. First, we updated it visually so we uh, changed the front bodywork. It had it was road legal in Sweden, but it had this terrible inset headlights. It looked awful. Okay. We wanted to update the styling too. Um, do you know Speed Hunters? Yes. So I was the found, yeah. founder of Speed Hunters. Okay. So as a result of that, I got to travel the world. You know, getting involved with different types of car culture, motorsports, yeah. modified cars, custom cars. So I learned a lot about all different scenes mm -hmm. and. Um, this project is my attempt to kind of take everything I've learned and put it into one. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of design cues on it that are probably more inspired by Japanese car culture or okay. even drifting. Um, but it tries also to stay true to the spirit of these old Porsche race cars. Yeah. And then um, Busy Moto then took the car over and he um, did all the mechanical updates. You can see it's got this crazy. Uh, turbo setup yeah, totally yeah, new and he, he redid everything modernized everything so it's got a full ECU setup um, it's got a new um, a fuel injection system so the, the stock on the stock car they don't they're not mounted there are they or are they well the original race cars uh, had turbos in this position so we wanted to put them like this okay. it's a homage to the original cars but this is probably the most technically advanced Porsche 935 on the planet okay. right now even though it's a street car yeah. Um, because everything on it is very modern. Yeah. But it's not a full restoration. It's still an old build mm -hmm. in many ways. Cool. So have you actually driven it yet? I know you were building it. Um, it drives incredibly it. well, but we, we haven't put it on the dyno yet. Okay. And uh, Busy, he's going to do the full tune program. And we, we've got a lot of work to do to get it ready. But it is a street car. Okay. Barely legal street car, but, but it, it is a street car. So do you think you'll take it on track as well at some point? Yeah, probably. I'm going to have to learn how to drive it because yeah. it's got all the it's weight out the back piece. and yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to have to do a lot of work to make sure it handles beautifully. So you can see here that we've got a, we added a carbon fiber wing from uh, APR. It's a nice touch. So you can see there's modern bits. It's kind of a mix of yeah, retro. It, it all works together. So yeah. as I look at the car, I can't overly tell that it's modern, which is good. That means you've done it yeah. in the right balance. It, it, with the wheels, they're obviously... Yeah, we're, we work closely with, uh, with, with Rotiform. The original cars had a staggered setup. Okay. So we've tried to keep the original wheel size that the race cars had, which was a 19 inch rear wheel. Originally they had a 15 inch wide rim. Wow. We couldn't even get a tire that wide. <laughs> so we've gone, it's 12 and a half inches um, wide. Basically as wide as you Yeah, the, it's the biggest tire we could find. And then on front, um, I'm very close to the Drifter Mad Mike. Mm -hmm. So this is one of his collaboration designs with, um, with Rotiform. It's a little bit of a, Cue to drift culture having mismatched wheels. Wheels. Yeah. It's more like a drift thing. 
Do you want to tell us about the artwork on the car? Yeah, so this is a uh, this whole thing is a big art project, okay. you could say. Um, I work with the uh, creative agency Race Service, mm -hmm. and so we looked at this whole thing as a big chance to show, you know, our style and how we do things. One of our team members, he's an artist named Ornamental Conifer. Mm -hmm. So he um, is well known for hand painting cars. He views this as a painting, not okay. a car. Not a car, yeah. We worked with him, and he decided what kind of style he wanted to add. We came up with this fictional storyline that the racing team had crashed the car and wrecked the fiberglass from bodywork and they borrowed the bodywork from another team. Oh, yeah, okay. That's why it doesn't so match, like right? Delivery, yeah, it's mismatched. Yeah. yeah, that was okay. very deliberate. Yeah. One of the, the premises we came up with. So we actually changed it. So these are all replacement parts from a Porsche 935 uh, okay. race car. We've got a very modern um, projector lights here, all custom yep. made, handmade. Excellent. Very beautiful. So it's those kind of details that, that lift the style of the build up. And then uh, interior-wise, we've got a, a, lot of, um, a lot of bits from our partners at uh, Momo. I think the chrome, uh, this is more like a drift style thing, the chrome uh, bolt-in cage, the yeah. six-point harness from Momo. Uh, we haven't done too much with the interior. Yeah, I would, I would describe this as eclectic, but it works. Yeah. It pulls together everything and yeah. it actually works really yeah. well. Yeah. So uh, that, that's it, um, and we've gone a bit crazy putting stickers all over it. <laughs> is it 10 horsepower per sticker, isn't it? Is that the rule? Uh, I thought it's 7.5. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why there's the power is because of the stickers. We, we all know that, right? Yeah, right. None of that's true. No. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Rod. Yeah. Thanks for your time okay. and done an amazing job. Oh, I, I want to show you the augmented reality oh, okay. experience that goes okay. with it. So um, we actually have to go to the front here. Okay. So um, we've created, uh, there's a virtual experience that goes with the car. So we're showing the physical car, but we're also showing um, the vir virtual car. So we were inspired by all the music and the, that existed around the time that these cars are racing, late 70s, early 80s. And um, so, so we wanted to, um, to showcase like a retro, uh, retro, wave, retro wave style mm -hmm. and make the car look like it's driving in a Tron universe. So we've created this augmented reality experience that goes with it. So what we'll do here is we'll put the virtual car on top of the uh, real car. See that I'm placing it. So now it's locked. And um, yeah, you'll see the, the, okay. what we've created here. It's a bit crazy, but it's a bit eccentric, but it's, yeah. it's kind of cool. Well, the car's eccentric, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to continue. Yeah. So right now we're, we're traveling down this uh, infinite uh, elevator as the yeah. car goes into this uh, computer vision universe. So it's about to launch. So you can see that yeah. we, can, we can walk around now. Oh, okay, and it puts the car inside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. So well, let's go around the back of the car. So we've taken the artwork off the car too. And um, now you can see we're driving over this, uh, this bridge. And then we're about to go into a... Um, a future uh, city that's made out of ornamental conifers artwork. So I'll just show that to you. Do you want? Do you want to try it? Yeah. That is really cool. It's different. Oh yeah. All the logos and everything. That is super cool. It's a really good idea. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very different. And we want to show uh, what, what's possible with. Yeah. Uh, you can create all these different experiences of, in augmented reality yeah. that it's attached to the car. So. Well, it just goes with a whole yeah. new and old. So exactly. Old car, yeah. Completely new technology. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully, people when they think of this, they're also hearing 
retro music yeah. and uh, this kind of some of the other inspirations that we're thinking about when we design the car. Amazing project and it's uh, really cool to speak to you about it because obviously when you come to see me, you see a car, you just see the car and say, oh, that looks yeah. cool. But to actually hear the story behind it yeah. actually ties everything in. So now I can say thank you very much. Ron. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you guys have any other cars you want us to cover at SEMA, please let us know. If you'd like to watch more SEMA videos, you can click over here. If you want to watch anything that YouTube suggests you might like, you can click over here.